Minister, the question actually fits in very well with the conversation you just had. So in October, as you know, I made a submission to both yourself and Minister Noonan, uh, together with the Equality Budgeting Campaign, to see if equality budgeting could be incorporated into Ireland's budget. Ms. Minister Noonan came back and suggested that this was uh, your area. Um, and I guess, at its simplest, what, uh, what we're looking for is analysis that would answer the questions that both yourself and Deputy uh, MacDonald have just been asking, which is, for any proposed budget, who gets hit the hardest? Uh, so my question is, Minister, for this year, uh, do you believe that any of the components of equality budgeting can be incorporated? And at its very simplest, what I think would be a great success would be for on budget day for Dole Aaron, along with the proposed budget from, from Cabinet, to get a set of distribution and, uh, distributional analysis by income, uh, by gender and by age, Thank so you. that we can, we can see who is being asked to carry the burden. Thank you. Uh, Minister the Richard. primary objective last Concorla, of all recent budgets has been to return stability to the public finances, as I indicated. In this context, uh, it has also been of vital importance to this government, very important to every member of the government, to spread the burden of adjustment in as fair and as equitable a manner as is possible, in order to protect the most vulnerable and also to seek to stimulate economic growth and job-rich recovery. Um, expenditure on health, education and social protection accounts for over 80% of gross voted current expenditure, as Deputy knows. In implementing the budgetary adjustments required to, to achieve a successful exit from the Troika programme, the government has sought to protect frontline spending in these areas. In 2014, we've allocated 19.6 billion euros to the Department of Social Protection. And in allocating that amount, we maintained, as I've said, primary weekly rates of social welfare payments. This means that since this government took office, weekly prim primary payments have been maintained. Similarly, in the area of education, the government has sought to protect funding in respect of DESH uh, resources. This funding is provided in addition to the normal funds allocated to, tackle, uh, to tackling educational disadvantage. By prioritising the educational needs of children and young people from disadvantaged communities, from preschool right through second level education. As the Deputy is aware also, there has been a number of reforms in the budgetary process at national and EU level, which can assist the Oireachtas and the Deputy with a timely consideration of the expenditure plans of government. In line with the new budgetary timetable, the revised um, estimates volume was published on the 18th of December last. This new timetable allows for early consideration of the estimates. Uh, by each relevant line committee, uh, committee of the Oireachtas. The REV has been expanded so that now each department and office reports about key performance uh, uh, indicators relevant to their area of operation. And the purpose of this is to show what services are being purchased with money voted and the impact of these services on the Irish citizen and for Irish society in general. Thank you, Minister. I, Mr. Mr. Clay will appear in the official report. Deputy Donald. Uh, thank you, Minister. I, I, I have to say, with respect to whoever drafted the response for you, it, it doesn't address the question I asked in, in any way whatsoever. The question I asked was, when you and Minister Noonan and the Cabinet come in here on Budget Day and propose a draft budget to Dáil Éireann for consideration, will you provide with that a distributional analysis? In other words, who is being asked to bear the highest burden? Um, I know the Labour Party obviously would espouse a situation whereby those who have the least would be asked to carry the least burden. The problem is that the, the latest analysis we have, which comes months after we have to vote on the budget, shows that the last few budgets have been regressive, um, that those who have the least have been asked to bear the highest burden. Um, and so what I'm asking, which is becoming common practice around the world, which is very successfully implemented in Scotland, what I'm asking is for Dole Aaron's consideration, can you please bring us in a distributional an analysis that says, were you Dole Aaron to vote through this budget? Here is how each of the income deciles, here is how the two genders, here's how the different age groups would be affected by it so that Dole Aaron and the members of the public can better examine and query the proposal that is being put to them. Thank you. Minister? Um, firstly, I approve uh, and read and alter all questions, all answers that I deliver here. Uh, they're not prepared uh, in, in some external way from me, and I'm responsible for all answers that I give here. Uh, in terms of this particular question, you can take one budget in isolation, in, particularly in times of crisis, nor can you compare the three budgets we've had, which have been crisis budgets, designed to rescue us from disaster to a normal budgetary cycle. 
So that's why I was explaining to you that we've changed the whole mechanism for doing budgets by uh, asking uh, through the, uh, the new line department system, each, dep each committee, and you know, do the work, go into the committee, call in the Secretary General well in advance of the budget. Now, before the budget is announced in October, look at the comprehensive review of expenditure of all the options. You uh, drill into the options and make recommendations. Uh, that's what I'm suggesting uh, you do, and we will provide as much data to the committee system as, as deputies require in relation to that. Thank you, Minister. Deputy John Lee. Uh, thank you, Minister. And I would like to acknowledge that the budgetary process has significantly improved, certainly in the three years that I've been in the Dáil. I would ask, though, would you, would you just answer the specific question, because I think it would be incredibly useful, both for public consideration and for Dáil Aaron's consideration. Of course, uh, crisis budgets are different to, to steady state budgets. Of course they are. Nonetheless, it is probably more important in a crisis than at any other time because very tough decisions are being made to know are there particular groups, male, female, different age groups, uh, different people along the income uh, spectrum who are being asked to carry a disproportionate share of the pain of the correction. I believe that the budgets that have been brought in since the crisis, some of them anyway, have been unbalanced in asking certain groups, particularly lower income groups, particularly subgroups like lone parents, to bear an unreasonable share of the correction. And I believe it would be an incredibly healthy thing for parliamentary democracy and for the so socio-economic effects of the budgets if we know on the day the budget is being provided what the proposed distribution of the pain of the correction is. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, final reply, Minister. I've answered the question a couple of times, but I'll do it again. Um, number one, you can't look at each um, budget, particularly in a, a series of crisis budgets in isolation. You have to look at the cumulative effect of budgets. For example, um, the analysis that's done by some uh, looks at all taxation increases as being progressive. Even if you have reached the very highest marginal rate of taxation in comparison to any other OECD countries. If you increase taxation, that's a progressive thing. Uh, if you reduce expenditure, that's a regressive thing. So I think we need to have a, a, a realistic model to see um, what levels of taxation is appropriate, what types of taxation is appropriate. And that's the sort of drilling down rather than a crude graph system that the, the deputy is talking about. And I would have thought that uh, somebody of the caliber of the deputy opposite would be developing those systems himself and making the new committee systems work, calling in the key officials in line departments to test those theories um, uh, and to, to ensure that the, the, prog uh, the, the progressive taxation system, for example, that we have by any comparison within the OECD system is maintained. The, I, I, I disagree in relation to uh, the notion that uh, any category of social welfare recipient were, um, were over uh, impacted upon because we've worked might and main to protect social welfare spending, as you, you know, Minister. and that's a, a fact. And if you read any of the commentary from the external overviewers from the Troika, they comment on the fact of our very high levels that we were determined to main up to, to social welfare provision in this country that I'm proud that Thank we protected. You. Minister, Deputy 